Welcome to the final part of the Spire into the Dragonfly Let's Play. Um, in this part we will be doing the final boss. But first, Atlas. Something I haven't really uh, shown off much, but... You know, just the thing that shows you your, your entire inventory. And as you can see, we've got everything 100% uh, complete. Which means we can do all three phases of the final boss. So now, um, well, now on to the boss. Now the portal, it's, um, it's that one from the cutscene, the beginning, and if anything, it looks a bit like, um, it reminds me of uh, Crush's dungeon. Uh, I, mean, I suppose it's a bit more interesting because it's not a black pit. I might chroma key it for fun. Again? How is this possible? I will take care of but this, you Wait a minute, I this uh, dialogue from Ripto doesn't make sense if you do all three phases at once. They intended, I think they intended um, for you to do each phase on its own because he doesn't say that if you fight him and you're only doing the first phase. He'll um. He'll, he'll say, like, I'll get you once and for all if you beat him after, like, the first phase. And then after the second one, he'll say, um, oh, um, he'll say, oh, I don't want to sound, you again. And then, yeah, like, oh, I don't want to sound like a video game cliche. I'll say something different this time. Um, because I thought when I was doing good that he might have been referencing, like, Spyro 2 or something. Like, he might have said it in that game, but no. Just an earlier phase of the fight. So the yeah the dialogue's weird. Um, and I never found this boss like scary or intimidating when I was in because of because of two reasons. One is hocus pocus, and the other is um, the fact that Riptoad looks really stupid and he runs around like really quickly like a maniac. And um, you just like chasing him around essentially. I well, notice Ripto's model is really big, like, even before he uses the spell to make himself bigger. It's almost as if he's, um... Oh, I've got one bow combo there. Um, it's almost as if uh, he used, like, his spectating model as a uh, point of reference for uh, this game. And yeah, I got killed because, for some reason, the... Yeah, because when you when you do get hit by him, he does kind of hit stun you. And um, but then for some reason, my ice breath just wouldn't um, wouldn't hurt him. I don't know what was going on there. Like it wouldn't because when you, you can tell you've hurt him when he runs away. And for some reason, he, like you saw, I was flaming it and non well, breathing on him non-stop, and uh, nothing was happening. But yeah, you can. It is actually pretty easy if you just keep up with him to um, to actually hit him um, for the first two phases without taking a hit. But uh, yeah, that was like the only time really where I've been hit that badly, which is a shame. Um, at least when you die, you don't have to redo earlier phases. So, uh, yeah, I say it's easy, and then I get hit, and I'm just like, uh, please, please nerf Ripto. <laughs> this combo game is, is too much. But yes, uh, the third phase is really weird. It's long, tedious. Um. It's like his scepter messes up again, turns him into this like monster thingy. Um, and then then it gets a bit random because he does these attacks, and you can only hurt him when his scepter malfunctions again, and um, and you have to zap him with the electric breath, and that seems to be the only real like hint or anything. It's obviously, he's got like cheap electronic 
one from like the pound shop, some cheap scepter. Um, and that's probably why it's not um, working 100% of the time. But there doesn't seem to be any pattern, there doesn't seem to be anything you can do to cause it to happen, it just seems to happen on its own. And sometimes you can go on for ages and it not happen. And then plus the lack of focus on Ripto in the camera can make things a bit annoying as well. Because what you can't even see what the attack is doing. He has like this one thing where he shoots a load of ice balls and then he, there's this one where he shoots like three ice balls that home in on you. As long as you just run around the outside of the arena you won't get hit by it. So now his things are malfunctioning. But you don't have that long to do to, to get to him, so if you're on the other side of the arena, you're probably not going to make it in time, which is annoying because it just prolongs the, the fight even longer. So I don't know what they would have done if they kept it like the same format um, as the other things where you have to like flame his crotch or, or, his, or even ice breath his crotch and give him a a cold hard on him <laughs> but uh yeah I wouldn't know what you would you just put like loads of metal around him um, it would be funny if you could uh, if if like they made it so you finish him off with the bubble breath that would have been actually an interesting um final thing to do just to give the uh, just give the bubble breath an extra use so like, yeah, even the uh, wing shield isn't used here. I wonder if he can actually protect himself from his attacks with the wing shield. That might be an interesting thing to test. Um, I suppose now's a good time to talk about the music since nothing really interesting is going on. It's just a just a baby whacking his um, rattle on the ground. The music starts off decent, and then it gets worse as it goes on. Like. It's weird. Um, it actually sounds like the game itself. Um, promising start and then t doesn't deliver. It, uh, it's like it starts out okay, and then it, and then it becomes like a bit of a mess. There's a load of like random samples being used, um, and it just doesn't work with the other samples being used. And it's almost as if like it's almost as if like Stuart Copeland uh, gave up. Midway. I um I don't know what to do now here. Uh, you you there. Finish this song that me, I'm I'm just I'm just the caretaker, yeah, but I'm I'm bored. Uh you do it. I don't know how many hits this Ripto thing has. It's either it's either four or five. I think he has five hits. But yeah, I think we're uh, close to being done. Just as long as his thing breaks again. Would appreciate it if someone would be able to say what uh, what actually causes him to for his um. His staff to mess up. But, yep, yeah, I think that's our last hit on him, maybe. There we go. And he's just taking a moment to um, think about what happened. <laughs> and then we get this uh, little cutscene here. This only, um, well, first the loading screen. Uh, second loading screen. Oh, it looks like the arena in Spyro 2 slightly. Um, yeah, then you get this one if you, if you know, do the third phase, like all of it. Although I do remember seeing something. I think, no, I think again. maybe Ripto might have special dialogue for if you, if you beat him in an earlier phase and you don't have the, the next one locked. Dragons, dragonflies! I can't win! I can't win! Well, that's what you get for playing with your little sticks. 
silly, Ripto. Don't you know magic and dinosaurs don't mix? You haven't heard the last of me, you little demon. I'll be back, and you'll be sorry. Well, magic and dinosaurs might mix for something, but <laughs> funny jumping animation. And Sparrow just looks at the camera and he's like, well, how do I get out now? <laughs> what am I meant to do? And we got our, um, we got a giant watermelon. Nice. And a cake. I like cake. And then we get this cutscene as well. Only get it when you 100% it. <laughs> and there's a Ripto pinata in the background. It looks like he hung himself. That's a bit dark. Well, as normal as fairy tales go anyway, pal. I'll tell you what, though, guys. We weren't just going to stand by and let... Maze. Yeah, as far as like, oh, yeah, things are going back to normal, I guess. Who writes Sparks? Um, or the dragonflies. Well, and Hunter. everything is finally back to normal. Everything's back to normal, isn't it, Spyro? <laughs> and Spyro just winks, and then, you know, Hunter's just there, like, who are you winking at? Is it back to normal or not? <laughs> Answer me. <laughs> well, what do you think, Bianca? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I was only supposed to talk in the one cutscene. <laughs> but yeah, here's the. Uh, yeah, we game's done. Got the credits. Uh, I I really like the uh, the credits music here. Um, but first, you might notice not a single insomniac name in sight. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess these these people tried at least. They um, you gotta give them that. They weren't like. Oh, uh, let's just slap some together. There's been a lot of uh, talk about what the reason why this game went wrong. People saying it was pushed. People saying, um, like, for an early release date. People were saying that, oh, uh, they had to redo a lot of stuff. Um, uh, there was some other stupid reason. It's a bit like with them. Um, a bit like with Sonic 06. There's loads of reasons people say, oh, that were wrong. There's not as many for this one. It's nothing like, oh, they fired their testing team for saying that it was rubbish or anything like that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the music here for this credits, uh, I really like it. It's very Spyro 4 sounding, and I do like the Spyro 4 it's like st style of music. Um, but not only that, there is a um, there is a callback to Spyro 1 in this credits music. There is um, a set of eight notes. That you might have heard, maybe if I'm um, probably talked over it, um, and it's a uh, do 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 do. That is um, I just heard it there. That is a motif that w a motif that was in Spyro One. It was um, it appeared in a lot of songs in that in that game. Um, Appeared in the main theme, appeared in um, appeared in Dark Passage, appeared in um, appeared in the Beast Maker's Homeworld, appeared in um, uh, somewhere else as well. Um, appeared in quite a few levels. Just trying to think of a couple off the top of my head, but yeah. Um, But I, I I do like how they did um, how he did do that. It's a it's a nice uh, sort of close to things because this was the last time that Stuart Copeland did the uh, the music for Spyro, so it's kind of nice how he ended where he started, almost. Uh, but the music doesn't loop in this. It kind of just stops and then I think it starts again. The uh, the credit sequence itself is a little bit more um, it's a little bit more uh, well it's quite a bit more boring than um, the other uh, the other games well, at least they got like a good decent voice cast like the same from the earlier games but um, but anyway yeah the credit sequence is a bit it's a bit um, boring it's just a static image with a weird particle effect around the dragonfly. He's got his tongue right out, covering the Spyro logo. Right. No, I'm the star of the show. 
and Sparrow are looking a bit confused. It's not like the other ones where it was a, um, it was like the camera flying around the different levels, um, giving like different views that you wouldn't normally get um, through normal gameplay. Um, at least it does actually have its own music this time, not like um, the other games, which just used a remix version of Misty Bog, looped for only um, part of the song and not the entire song. Like even even two and three had the, the remix Misty Bog music for their credits, even though it wasn't like Misty Bog wasn't even in that or anything. Or um, but yeah, it's just a. Um, I think we're coming towards. Are we coming towards the end of the credits, or is there going to be like something weird at the end? I think we're here with. Um, I guess if they did do the flying around the level stuff, it would be a bit. Um, it would be pretty short because there's only nine levels. Or something, and then there's this weird motivational like message: "Your work is you. Don't let you down." It's, it seems kind of random. It's almost, I don't know, I've noticed with the games that aren't that great, they tend to put one of those like messages at the end, like, like Regret Search for Reptile had like, we did it for the children. <laughs> it's like, your work is you, don't let you down. Maybe because they're aware it was a bad game. <laughs> and they're like, we let ourselves down. Don't you make the same mistake. But yeah, we're, um, yep, back to the title screen. And there we go, another hundred percent save file. The the cow is now a hundred percent beef. So you can you don't have to worry about any artificial things or anything like that. There's no there's no horse meat in this burger. Well, that's an old joke. But yeah, when you load up the game it takes you straight to the boss fight. So the only way you can leave is through the Atlas by level warp. It doesn't even give you an option to quit the level. Only quit the game. Which is an odd choice, like it's silly that. Because if, if you don't know about the level warp in the Atlas, then you won't be able to um, leave and you think you have to do the game again. Like, there's no real reason for you to go back to any of the levels unless if you really are fond of one of the mini challenges. Like if you want to do a speedway again. Because there's nothing there for you to do. Because you, you collected everything and the levels are a lot more boring than the other spiral ones. So there's nothing interesting to see either. There's no skill points in this game. Um, it's a bit like here at the start menu. Once you press start, you can't actually go back to the press start bit. Triangle just reloads the game. Reloads the save file. So there's no way to... Um, Go back to the start uh, start screen. Not that it really matters. Um, and one percent for money bags because that's all he's really worth. Filthy man, bear, pig. But yeah, so you never get your money back for money bags, which is a bit of a disappointment. And uh, yeah, you can't um, you can't warp either. Um, I mean, no, you can warp, people might not think you might be able to if you've played the earlier games because you had to unlock that ability, but in this one you, you don't, you always have it, so. But that's it for uh, Spyro Into the Dragonfly, uh, thank you for watching this Let's Play, and I'll see you in the next one.